Okay, continue. All right. Uh, and of course, for anyone else um, who are climate justice working group members or panelists and folks who are participating um, to reduce noise, uh, make sure your rooms are muted, raise your hands um, so you can get unmuted. Uh, since we're broadcasting through WebEx, um, state your name before you start. And uh, if you can uh, try to be on camera with your name in the uh, on the screen so folks know who's speaking. And uh, next slide, please. So we're going to just quickly run through the agenda. Um, next slide. Uh, we're going to start with a roll call. Um, unfortunately, we do not, I can already tell, we do not have a physical quorum. So we will be skipping uh, the part where we vote on the minutes uh, from our March uh, 27th meeting. We can always vote on those at a later date. Um, we'll discuss the uh, annual review of the criteria, um, some bylaws and other duties that we are looking to add, and what our future meetings might look like before we discuss what our next steps will be. Um, does uh, anyone have any questions, comments, or concerns before on any of those items uh, for the agenda before I move forward? Um, we will go to the roll call. I'll start here with folks who are present uh, in Albany. Uh, myself, uh, Lana Cadell Tucky. Uh, Chris Cole from NYSERDA. Uh, Elizabeth Firth, Department of Labor. Uh, I see that Jill, I think Jill, you're available here in Raybrook. Yes, I am. Hi, Jill. And I don't believe we have anyone in the New York City boardroom, but if, are there any members in the boardroom? Okay, and we'll go to uh, WebEx. Uh, like I said, we do not have a quorum, so we will not be able to uh, deliberate or vote on anything, but we can still have a discussion on our uh, potential uh, annual review on our potential bylaws and duties and future meetings and next steps. Um, so I'll now go to our working group members on WebEx. Um, Abby? I am here, and I'm sorry I'm going to keep my camera off of today because I'm a little under the weather. That's okay. I hope you feel better soon. Uh, Sono? Here. Hi. Uh, and Rawa? Here. Hi. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, next slide, please. So we're uh, we're going to skip the minutes because we don't uh, have them, and we're just going to jump right to the uh, status on reporting uh, benefits reporting. Uh, next slide, please. So we are currently. I'm oh, sorry. I mean, next slide. Go back. <laughs> Apologies. Um, so we are currently in the process of developing a format and a uh, process for tracking and reporting on clean energy and energy efficiency uh, investments and the benefits uh, with uh, the DACs. And so um, we're also going to be developing guidance for agencies uh, during this process. Um, so we hope that the reporting format uh, process and the agency guidance will be ready within the next several weeks. Um, we're going to keep the working group updated uh, on these work streams, and we hope we plan to review all of this at our next meeting, which we expect uh, will take place in June. Um, so, as we talked about in our December working group meeting, uh, state agencies are going to track and report out on the place based clean energy and energy efficiency investments. Uh, so we can be in compliance with the climate X goal uh, 40% of the benefits accruing to DAX. Um, additionally, we uh, expect that agencies are also going to track and report on co-benefits of the spending, uh, such as like energy savings, employment, workforce development, and health impacts. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Unfortunately, I can't see if folks have their hands up. <laughs> All right. Uh, no questions. We will move forward. Uh, next slide, please. 
So with the annual review on the criteria, um, so uh, next slide. Yes. So, as you know, the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act requires the Climate Justice Working Group review the disadvantaged communities criteria on an annual basis. Um, so, as we stated in our last meeting, we are going to uh, look at what that looks like for the Climate Justice Working Group. Um, we're going to uh, work on assessing the uh, data availability. So, our technical team is going to review all of our existing indicator data. Um, all the sources that we have um, and all those uh, sources and data that we had for our consideration list. Um, as you recall, we considered over 170 indicators. There were some that we didn't include because they didn't have adequate information at the time. So we can, those are definitely the first place that we're going to go to look back to consider when we're looking at potentially adding um, these resources. Uh, we're also going to be looking um, for updates to the existing data sets, such as the census data, as well as, you know, the availability to new data. A lot of these data sources update uh, at different points during the year. So we're going to be tracking that and uh, making sure that we get those updates done and, you know, discuss them so they can be publicly available as soon as possible. Um, after this assessment, uh, we're going to share our findings with the climate justice working group that will take place uh, publicly. And we're going to provide everyone with our recommendations um, if for any potential changes to indicators or methodologies um, to, you know, adding data sets, you know, anything that we've discussed. Um, then, you know, when we convene the working group for a deliberation, which will we'll have to have a quorum in order to actually sit through and deliberate and discuss those recommendations. Um, we just want, you know, we're going to make sure that we're just going through them sort of the way we went through this process initially. Uh, so, if there's a proposed change to the disadvantaged communities criteria, we would need to vote on that. Uh, and that would, again, require the majority of uh, climate justice working group members to vote in the affirmative. And we would need to have a physical quorum in order to conduct that vote. Um, we'll also be assessing the criteria uh, with an eye, you know, towards how these provisions are being implemented. So, we're going to be uh, constantly checking on reporting and tracking data. Um, so that when we're considering new potential new criteria or looking at uh, current criteria and current indicators, uh, we're going to be considering everything that's coming in as this is working. So this, again, as we stated before, it's a first step in it. It's a work in process. Oh, so will you have your hand up? Yes, um, thank you, Alana, for, for your work putting this meeting together. I just wanted to make a statement here. Um, so. There's there's a number of climate justice working group members that are currently concerned with some of the um, processes that are unfolding right now with the CLCK and the New York State budget process. I think um, so. We do have a couple climate justice working group members that have decided to boycott this meeting because of that concern, and I think that's something that is really important to highlight. We have also a number of climate justice working group members that have um, decided to write a letter together to Commissioner Sagos and, and President Harris about our concern with the New York State budget process as it relates to a change in the CLCPA. Our, um, the undersigned of this letter have a overarching concern around the process of um, how we have all spent three years um, some of us more, some, some folks um, spent more time even advocating for the CLCPA to, to be created in the first place to create um, what is a very complicated and well thought out process around how we are addressing the climate crisis in New York State. And the undersigned on this letter have, have a deep concern about what's unfolded over the past couple of days. As a result, some of our working group members have already decided to boycott this meeting. And some of us are also deciding that we, we won't participate in the rest of the meeting from here on out. So I hope you understand and please take a look at our letter. And we do have an interest in engaging in a process around how we can restore um, uh, more faith in, in this, this process, given the, act, the events that have been unfolding over the past couple of days. We do hope we can engage in that in the near future. So thank, thank you very much for putting the meeting together. I myself am going to be leading the meeting, and I think a couple other climate justice working group members will be doing the same. 
Thank you, Sona. I will also be leaving the meeting. This is Raul Garmatian. And I will be leaving as well. This is Abby. Um, I believe that only the uh, state representatives. Uh, Joe, right? No, it's Joe. Joe is still. Joe, are you still with us? I'm still here. Okay. All right. Um, well, uh, thank you to the Climate Justice Working Group members uh, for you know making their voices heard. We uh, don't quite object to. That um, with regards to the budget negotiations, I, I really can't speak to any of that. Um, these conversations are underway, and uh, we still do have an ongoing commitment to public involvement um, in all areas of the implementation of the Climate Act. And there will absolutely be opportunities for folks to comment. Um, and we're going to make sure that every aspect uh, stays uh, transparent. And especially with regards to the Climate Justice Working Group, we have maintained a transparent process. We'll continue to maintain a transparent process. Um, I understand uh, folks' concerns. Um, I, I, I do uh, wish I <laughs> had a little bit more that I could uh, information to address them directly. Um, but unfortunately, that, that's not kind of, that's not really my role. Here, um, so, um, uh, I will continue to sort of move forward uh, with this meeting to the extent possible. Like I said, uh, we didn't have a quorum, so we won't be voting, but um, if people have questions, uh, comments or concerns, please feel free to send them to uh, climatejusticewg.ny.gov. Um, and uh, while our uh, members of the Climate Justice Working Group are, many members are not on, um, we do appreciate uh, all of their hard work and dedication. And we look forward to uh, meeting with them in the future and uh, having discussions uh, with them on a lot of these issues and on issues that are directly related to the uh, CLCPA. So uh, thank you, everyone. Um, so we'll, um, like I said, I'm continue moving forward with the uh, annual review process. Um, sorry, get back to where I was. Uh, so where was I? Um, oh yes, that we will be uh, continuing with us, and then we're um, with considerations. Um, impacts are going to take a few years to actually realize and measure, and, um, be able to understand. So uh, the changes to the criteria are they're going to require a significant administrative lift from all of our agencies and all the agencies that are required to report under this. So it's, it's going to take a little bit to get them to adopt some of these changes, but we are going to be uh, monitoring this process. We are going to be making sure that the, the strategy is in place and we're going to ensure that uh, we have the tracking mechanisms in place. So we'll be able to report out on um, the new criteria. So this is all going to all of this information will factor into recommendations. Um, on uh, potential adjustments or changes to the disadvantaged communities criteria during these annual reviews. Uh, are there any questions that anybody that folks would like to ask? Uh, next slide, please. So uh, now we're going to go into some of the bylaws and uh, other duties that might uh, pop up. So uh, next slide. Oh, so um, before I begin, I just wanted to make a quick announcement that uh, Dr. Jonathan Brown is no longer going to be representing the rural communities on behalf of the Climate Justice Working Group. He uh, has already left our state uh, to take an exciting position in Massachusetts. Uh, we wish him the best in his work, and we really do appreciate his time with the Climate Justice Working Group. Um, and, uh, we hope that he does stay in touch. Um, so moving forward, um, we're going to look to develop a more organized process when it comes to resignations in addition to the climate justice working group. Uh, that's going to include a set, uh, a set, a set of bylaws for governance. We are in the process of drafting these bylaws and we definitely want to make sure that we are getting the working groups input and review. Uh, we definitely want to make sure that we have something for folks to review uh, by the time we have our June meeting. So uh, keep an eye out in your email boxes. Um, we, uh, 
I will make sure that you guys have an opportunity to review those before they actually come out. So you have an opportunity to make some decisions. Uh, so, as you say there, we're going to the bylaws, uh, they're going to address what our duties are. Obviously, under the law, we're already going to, you know, talk about what meeting formats, you know, how that's going to look, um, what the resignation and appointment of new members is, and of course, adding the annual review. So, again, um, if anybody has any sort of, you know, ideas about uh, additional things that should be added to our bylaws, mind you, their bylaws, um, feel free to let me know. Any questions on that? Okay, uh, next slide, please. So, uh, currently, um, we uh, have there are statutory duties that exist under the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act. And as we move forward, it's really important to know what uh, people would like to see in this process. So our main duty is to review the disadvantaged communities criteria on an annual basis. But there are also sort of a host of uh, legislative proposals that seek to include the climate justice working group in a consultation role. And uh, this expanding of the climate justice working group is a bit beyond what the Climate Act initially intended for this body and for the role that you actually uh, were appointed for and what you agreed to do. So um, it's one of the reasons we wanted to create the bylaws is that we wanted this body just to make sure this continues to be a body that respects members, um, your time, your bandwidth, and it provides a democratic process. Um, for frontline communities across the state to be heard. So uh, current consultation roles um, with uh, regards to the CLCPA are your, right now your duties to review the disadvantaged communities criteria, to consult uh, for the departments um, implementing regulations, to consult on air toxics emission strategy by June 24th, are on or before June 1st, uh, 2024, to uh, consult for clean energy and energy efficiency investments. Uh, so those are the are duties that with regards to the CLCPA. Um, there are also an article uh, 58 of the ECL, there was the uh, urban heat island effect bill that uh, has the uh, Climate Justice Working Group um, consulting with DEC on a study for the uh, impacts of the heat island effect on disadvantaged communities. So that will also be uh, an area where the Climate Justice Working Group will uh, be engaged in a consultation. Um, this role will not necessarily uh, be uh, through uh, play out uh, through the public uh, simply because it's not with regarding uh, disadvantaged communities criteria, but uh, the uh, Opinions of the public business working group, uh, we can definitely make sure that if folks ask if they need to know that they can definitely get that information. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so there's also legislation that's been proposed out there, and I just want to make folks aware of what it is. So um, there is uh, Assembly 964, Senate uh, 1292, and this would amend the ECL to um, require the development of a clean fuel standard, and it would require the uh, consultation of both the Climate Justice Working Group and the Climate Action Council with regards to how those funds are invested. Um, it doesn't really state what the uh, workload would look like or what that consultation would look like. So that's something that we would have to consider. Um, another piece of legislation, which doesn't currently have the same as, would establish an Office of uh, Energy for Equity, uh, sorry, Office of Energy for Equity uh, to support local and uh, communal development of climate projects, uh, specifically to support disadvantaged communities. This would also require consultation and reporting to the Climate Justice Working Group members on uh, the use of funds. Um, that one, uh, because it does involve uh, reporting, um, would uh, be, I think, a significant lift for the working group considering the current duty. So that's something that we definitely would want to have uh, a deeper dive and a deeper conversation um, in June. Uh, so we're currently monitoring these bills. Uh, we can let anybody know of any updates. So if anybody is curious and would like to read the legislation, we can definitely make sure we send that along to you. Uh, we'll definitely keep you updated on them as they 
move forward or not in the legislature and uh, make sure that we get as much information as we can about what our actual role is and what's expected of the climate justice working group in this process. Okay. Any questions, comments, concerns? All right, next slide, please. So uh, now we're just going to uh, dive in a bit to our uh, future meetings. So the working group members have indicated on multiple occasions that um, there's a preference for pre-scheduled meetings um, so that they're already on the calendar um, to keep the meetings to 90 minutes. Um, and considering schedules and work involved in the you know annual review, um, there is a you know. I definitely want to make sure that people have input in how this looks uh, moving forward. So uh, next slide. So I've um, come up with a series of uh, <laughs> potential ideas with numbers so folks can take a look. So there's, you know, we can have multiple uh, quarterly meetings. That would be four meetings a year, um, 90 minutes long. Uh, I find those easier for us to stay engaged. Um, where the, we could, they could always be pre-scheduled so we would know exactly when we're meeting. Um, I think that the only negative for that is that we would have to, there'd have to be a meeting at the end of the year, which we all know it, it's very, very difficult for us to schedule. So we would definitely need to make sure that folks are sending in calendar um, holds uh, so we know exactly when um, you're available, when you guys have your, uh, you know, galas, um, other events that you're holding. So we're not interfering or asking you to, you know, make difficult decisions because we don't want that. Uh, another uh, potential is for triannual meetings. So it's very similar to quarterly in that they're very easy to schedule and that would eliminate potentially having to have that end of the year meeting. Um, but that does leave us with uh, probably a significant gap between that third meeting and that annual meeting that we would have. So there, that's just something to think about uh, moving forward. Um, then of course, there would be biannual meetings, which would have to probably be two hours to make sure that we're getting enough information um, in there. So while it's only two meetings, we're definitely going to have to communicate a lot more through email, um, definitely making sure that our calendars are in sync with that one too, because we wanna make sure that we're having those two emails, we need everybody participating. And of course, the last one, which is the one nobody wants, it's the least ideal one, and that would be a one annual full day meeting. Uh, as you see, I don't like that one. That is a frowny face. That's very bad. Um, I don't think anybody, and that would definitely be an all So it's not an ideal option. It would have to be at least eight hours long, It'd be a full day meeting, and it would be in Albany. So you would be trapped in Albany with me for a full day uh, for an eight hour meeting. Um, just not really the most ideal. And there would be a lot of information that would be coming at you uh, and decision-making that would have to happen on the day. So it's not the most ideal function, but I did put it in there um, just to have the conversation. Um, obviously it being not my preference at all. Uh, does anybody, you have any questions at all? Questions, comments, concerns? On those options, no, there are no decisions, obviously, that are going to be made today. This is just something that I would want folks to consider um, and hopefully we'll be able to get together in June and really go through and determine which options are um, best for everyone. Uh, next slide, please. So our next steps, I'm going to send around a poll and some polling dates for June, uh, maybe July. Uh, the goal is for us, uh, now that we have a better idea of what our time commitment is, potentially could be, and uh, as well as having, you know, a set of bylaws for folks to look like they're ready for a vote, um, we'll have a clearer picture of how this is going to look. Um, and we should actually at that point also have a clearer picture of what the legislative, um, you know, potential legislative uh, additional uh, duties might be and a clear idea of what the benefits and reporting structure will look like. Um, so that hopefully we'll be able to all get together in June. Um, are there any questions before we close things out for the day? OK, 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Nope. Well, with that, uh, thank you everyone for participating. Um, we hope to meet with uh, other climate justice working group members very soon. Um, again, if there are any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, have a good day, everyone. Thank you for jumping on. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Jill. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.